you're going to hear a deluded Jezebel speaking about what she believes that patriarchy is. Patriarchy is a pact between God and Adam, where God said to Adam that he will curse the land, that Adam had to grow his own food, take care of himself, and take care of the woman, and be responsible for planet Earth. And so, um, I was asked recently by a group of young women, in the Young Women Leadership Conference program at Harvard, do I think of myself as a feminist? So I said, yes. I said, would you like to know how I define feminism? So they said, yes. So I said, I thought of feminism as one of the, the great liberation movements in human history. So according to this lady, females are being liberated by feminism. What are they being liberated from? Nobody puts a gun to a female's head that says, marry a man. No one puts a gun to a woman's head and says, date a man, be with a man, have a relationship with a man. If you want to have a relationship, then you need to relate with the other half. And if that other half demands from you to be submissive, and if you are not submissive, then there goes your relationship. That has nothing to do with oppression. It has everything to do with a relationship. Two people relating together. One needs something from one, the other person needs something else from the other. Males need submission and females. And it is the movement to free democracy from patriarchy. Translation, it is to remove God from society. And then I got a bunch of emails after that weekend, this is this Harvard group, saying the one thing I wrote down from the whole weekend was your definition of feminism. But it seems so obvious to me that that's what feminism is. Feminism is nothing more than a female rebellion against God's decision when Eve decided to bite into the apple. God made man in control of the earth and in control of women and control of everything. This is what patriarchy is. Man is in control. Man is the power source. I mean, it's really seeing, and it's easier for women to speak out against patriarchy because we're not so shamed for speaking out. Yes, it's really easy for females to rebel against God and God's decision and man's rule over the planet. Yes, it is. I think Virginia Woolf wrote about that in Three Guineas, actually. Um, but it's seeing how in contradiction with democracy, patriarchy is. But whoever said that democracy was correct, that's not what the world was started out with. That's not what America started out with, and it never was God's intention to have a democracy on the world. We live according to his rule, not to governmental rule. And the costs for both men and women. So that's what I think feminism is, and I think it's an extremely important, you know, incredible uh, historic movement of human liberation. Again, who was suppressing them? Nobody ever put a gun to a woman's head and said she had to get married. Nobody ever put a gun to her head saying she had to step into a relationship. She made those choices herself. When you step into a relationship, you are stepping into a bond between two people. And if one of those people requires that you be submissive, then you should be submissive. And so, of course, if that's what feminism is, movement to free democracy from patriarchy, you're going to have a kickback from patriarchy. If you try to remove God from society, he's going to kick your butt. Duh. And that makes, and what is it, the kickback is that feminism is anti-men and real men and all of this. And um, so I think that's why you have to go back to saying, wait a minute, that's not what feminism is. Yeah. She just got done saying that she wanted to kick God out of society and that society bites her back on the ass while she actually tries to attempt it. Is this so shocking to people? You don't remove God. It's his planet, it's his universe, his call, his rule. You live here as a guest, that's it. I think you have to define what patriarchy really is too. Well, you think of patriarchy, yeah, the, the sort of misunderstanding is this sort of men's oppression of women. But um, in fact, here's where the psychological work is key and the developmental work because it explains why women's voices are so important in this because if men are initiated, boys are initiated into patriarchy around these gender things, which is what is a real man and how is manhood constructed. And being a man means not being a girl or being a woman, and it means being on top. That's, that's patriarchal masculinity. 
and this happens around four and five and six. And this psycho is saying that a child's gender is determined around the age three, four, five, and six, when it's actually determined the day the doctor slaps him on the ass and says it's a little boy. Girls are initiated into patriarchal femininity, which means being selfless, which is really the most amazing term, being selfless in order to have relationships. How dare man have expectations of what he expects his partner to bring to the table? How dare man sit there and say, you have a role to fulfill as a woman? How dare man think that woman has to live up to her own gender sexual roles? But we just said, if you have no self, you're not in relationship. So it's, it's, it's incoherent, really. But since that doesn't happen till adolescence, girls have more language. And so they can speak about this. And if you silence girls and women, then nobody talks about it. More psychopathic grandiosity of believing that females have more special traits than men do, as if they are so specially unique in this world that every man should just bow to them and pander to them and see them for the frail, delicate little monsters that they are. So with all of this, you know, making feminism anti-men, which it's really not, um, or defining patriarchy not as something that divides everyone. It, it, I mean, what does patriarchy mean? It's a hierarchy, which... Do you all realize that this cycle just admitted that it's a hierarchy, meaning it comes from a higher being, it comes from God himself, not from government, not from man, not from woman, not from child, it comes from God himself? She just completely admitted that. And she's also admitting that she's rebelling against it. So if you're rebelling against God, what makes you think that you're in the right? They are completely psychopathic and delusional. These women are completely insane and should be locked up in mental wards and never released again. Which means a rule of priests in which the hieros, the priest, is a patriarch, a pater, a father. So it divides fathers, it divides some men from other men, you know, the men from the boys, like African-American men were called boys, not real men. A sad, pathetic, not feminazi attack on men to make them step over to feminism by saying that men or who live in a patriarchy have to divide themselves between men and children. That men are alphas and some are betas and some are zetas. As if that is a crime against nature, something horrible, even though that every animal on the planet partakes in the same behavior. And it divides all men from women. And it places uh, fathers over mothers and children. Yes, patriarchy does put men above women, just like the Bible says it does. And the reason for this is that Eve ate the apple. Eve was seduced, not Adam. Adam protected Eve by taking a bite, so therefore their punishment would be the same. God cursed the land, making it so that Adam can now farm and supply his own family with food and nourishment. He was now the alpha male. God stepped away from being provider and made Adam the provider. And therefore Adam took on the role as the patriarch. And in fact, you know, in making those separations, it divides everyone from parts of themselves. So psychologically, patriarchy is always unstable. On the other hand, if you talk about a democratic society, it requires <laughs> that kind of people having voices and being able to speak from their experience, speak honestly from their experience. So the psychological quality then feeds into a truly democratic society. So then you come back to patriarchy is, in, is, is, is contradictory to democracy like slavery is and like imperialism is. Again, nobody forces women into a relationship. Nobody forces a woman to have sex. No one, nobody forces a woman to become a mother. These are things that they do on their own accord. They want to do it. They want to take part of it. So if they want to wear the adult pants, then they need to be responsible like adults. You don't step into a relationship and then only think about yourself. It's called a relationship. You relate with somebody else. And... I think, that's, I think that's where we are right now in that struggle. For men, for women, for people of color, I mean the whole thing. 
So to make her insanity seem sane, she throws in the racism card and the sexism card, saying that men of color and that men, blah, 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 you heard it yourself. This is the typical manipulation of a feminazi. They act like they are on the good team when they are secretly on the bad team. This is nothing more than trying to destroy the family unit and to destroy God and to try to take him out of society. Okay? It is completely satanic and you need to understand this. Well, it's like the title of, of Christina Robb's book, This Changes Everything. It's a shift in the paradigm. Men are supposed to lead females. Females are not supposed to lead other females. So reading other females' books is not going to help your situation. All it does is perpetuate the negative, continuous rebellion of females. You act like you have the right to do this. You do not. If you join a relationship, then you are bound to certain roles. And if you don't fulfill the roles, then you are at fault. This is War Done's Fire. See you all later. Signing out. Bye-bye.